Bryant, Jane, in the news here this morning, five Americans and two Libyans have been indicted in a $50 million scheme to sell two military transport planes to Libya. James Polk has a report. Federal investigators say Libya was able to evade an American arms embargo and buy a pair of giant C-130 transport planes, masquerading the purchase as a shipment to another nation in West Africa. An indictment to be announced today charges five companies in California and West Germany with acting as middlemen in the sale. The Libyan government of Colonel Gaddafi has been trying to obtain the huge transport planes for at least 10 years. Previous sales by the Lockheed Corporation in Georgia were blocked by the U.S. government. Customs investigators began arrests last night in California. Seven people are being charged, five of them Americans, two Libyans. Officials say the chief of staff of the Libyan Armed Forces will be named in the indictment as a co-conspirator, although not formally charged in the case when the court papers are made public later this morning. James Polk, NBC News, New York. In Morocco, Israeli Prime Minister Shimon Peres and King Hassan are holding their final round of talks of their surprise summit this morning. These are the first publicly announced negotiations between an Israeli leader and the head of an Arab state since the Camp David Accords of 1979. New York Times correspondent John Burns was expelled from China this morning after being held by authorities there for several days on charges of entering a military zone and taking pictures. He dismissed the charges against him as nonsense. In this country, Richard Smith, a 25-year-old self-employed satellite dish dealer, is the infamous video pirate known as Captain Midnight. He admitted his guilt in court, saying yes, he broke into HBO programming last April to protest the scrambling of TV signals. Smith received a $5,000 fine. In Bolivia, a U.S.-financed anti-drug strike force has destroyed five cocaine processing labs in the jungle and has made some arrests but officials say no American troops were used in the assaults. Bolivian police destroyed the cocaine laboratories in a jungle area considered one of the world's richest. 170 U.S. troops are in Bolivia to provide logistical support for the narcotics raids. Hurricane Estelle is causing problems in the Pacific this morning. The storm sent 20-foot waves slamming into the southeastern shore of the Big Island of Hawaii, destroying several homes and forcing the evacuation of more than 200 others. The hurricane has sustained winds now of 95 miles an hour, gusts to 120 miles an hour. There was something of a Donnybrook of sorts last night in Cincinnati and a game between the Reds and the Mets. It began when Mets third baseman Ray Knight attempted to tag out Eric Davis on a steal from second. Well, Davis thought the tag was a bit too rough. And then, as you see, one thing led to another. And here they come. Both benches effing as we see fights breaking out around. Knight got in a right cross on Davis. The game was delayed 15 minutes, four players were ejected, and the final score was the Mets 6, the Reds 3. In other baseball action, the Chicago Cubs ball girl, Marla Collins, is leaving the club, much to the disappointment of her many fans. Ms. Collins appears without her uniform or anything else, for that matter, in the current issue of Playboy. She says she was pressured into leaving the job because of those revealing photographs. It's now moving up on six minutes after the hour. Let's go back to London. Brian, see what you're missing, all this action over here? Well, John, I was about to say the Mets are getting a little sensitive, aren't they? They must leave the <laughs> National League in fights. What's I thought problem? We, I thought we'd hear that from a Cub fan. Well, yeah, I only, I only see them, John. Calls them as I see them. Thank you very much. What we are...